Welcome to part two of working with the Kong drum designer. Let's go ahead and get started on this uh, section. So I will go ahead and maximize the rack and let's drag a Kong in here. I'm going to minimize the browser with F3. So let's uh, talk about the pads here. One thing I'd like, you know, I think it's important to understand about the pads is that these you should think of these more of like a blank canvas that you can do anything with these here and not so much as a rigid and static uh, pad or pads that can only play one sound or one sound channel that it corresponds with numerically. So you have these numbers up top here. Um, you can assign the same drum channel or sound to several different pads and you can also trigger several pads at once using only one. So just as I mentioned about the numbers up top, these when you're working with the Kong, this is what you really want to pay attention to when you are working with the sounds and understanding which sounds are loaded to which pad. So this is the default kit that loads with Kong. And just as an example, you can see now these are labeled differently. You've got hi-hat closed, hi-hat open, and tight. But if you take note in the upper uh, left corner here, they all say three. So each one of these pads is using the same sound, but it has a different hit type. So, you know, if I click here on the hi-hat closed, you see it's on hit one. that's hit four and that's hit three so when you're working with the sounds just be sure that you're taking note of the numbers in the up, upper left hand corner that's gonna let you know which sound is actually being used or rather you know in this case each one of these is using the same sound so if you're having issues uh, that will just help you understand what's going on of course, you can rename your pads here. These are all using the same sound, but they have different labels. So just know that you can always double click on that and reassign. One other thing is when you select the pad, the sound is auditioned. But if you ever want to, you have the option of selecting pads by clicking on the name below, and you won't have that auditioned sound. So when you click on a pad, if you take note of the drum control panel here, it will display the drum sound, drum three. So see, technically this is, you could say that this is pad four, but we're, we're using three. And again, technically this could be pad eight, but we're using three. And the name uh, matches over here in the drum control panel. So um, let's start actually with the drum control panel. Here you you have um, you can adjust the macro parameters for each pad, as well as loading your own drum sound for an each for each pad. You can load your own samples or browse the oops that's the save uh, or browse reasons drum sounds. We're in the hi-hats folder. You can go up by one folder. And here you see Kong sounds and samples. And you've got them organized by folder. The uh, pitch is obvious. And as I mentioned in uh, the first video, know that if you click lower, it's, it's quieter that the dynamics change as you click higher. So the pitch will just change your pitch. The decay, that's another obvious one, but just, you know, it, it controls how long that sound is gonna last lack of better description. 
see we just got a click there if we turn the decay in the, in, to the left. And all the way to the right, then it's going to play the full length of the sound. And this is, you know, you're going to have these controls for each pad that you select. These will just tailor each sound. Now the bus effects, this is just going to control the send, how much is sent to whatever you have on the bus effects here. So we don't have anything there now. If I, let's choose something, the tape echo. So let's make this very obvious and turn the feedback up a lot here. So with this, you can control how much of the signal goes to the bus effects here. You see it's much less pronounced the further to the left there. And the aux 1 and 2, you can, you know, send these drum sounds out to an external effect device, say, uh, like the like a reverb or a delay, such as the RV7000. If I tab and switch the rack around, you can see we have the send outs here for aux 1 and 2. So that's what you're controlling, uh, the level being sent out to these aux sends. Now, if you use the aux sends out, there is not a return on the back panel here. So you'd need to create a, an audio channel device to then route the outs of the effect device and uh, have a mix channel for those. And moving on, what do we have now? Pan, another obvious one. Just panning left or right. The tone is going to brighten your sound up the further you raise this. And the level. This is the master level for the individual drum sound in the pad. You do have the master level for all of the sounds in your pads, but then this is the main level for adjusting uh, your drum pad sounds. Below these controls, you do have um, the quick edit button. So this will allow you to make quick adjustments for each pad without having to select each one and then adjust the macro parameters. So you can click, so for offset and decay, you click and you've got these crosshairs. Um, so the x-axis, the horizontal one, controls the decay and the y-axis, the vertical one, controls the pitch. Now if you take note of the knobs here, as I move this selector here, you can see that it then adjusts that parameter. So the y-axis is for the pitch and then moving horizontally will adjust decay. You can also hold down shift for more precise control. See with sh with shift off it moves like that. With shift on you're just able to control more precisely your adjustments. Now here you've got uh, these vertical bars that will then control the sends for the bus in aux 1 and 2. If you hover, then you can see this is uh, for the bus effects, aux 1 and aux 2. And you can just click or drag to make those adjustments. And then again, taking note here, those do adjust. You can see that change. 
when you're adjusting the levels here in the quick edit mode. So with uh, pan and tone, you have the crosshairs again. Pan is on the x-axis, tone or level is on the y. That's interesting. I would think that pan and tone would be in here. And this one. So tone, you have two for level. Level is here as well as also tone. So level is on the y-axis. Tone, the x. OK. So let's move on to the pad settings area. At the top, uh, you have mute, clear, and solo. So if you have a pad selected, you can mute it. The clear button will clear any muting that you've done, or it will also clear soloing. So if you have those, instead of going in and having to change each one, you can just hit clear. Again, you have quick edit so that you can mute and solo each of the 16 pads quickly in this area here. And you you can just hit the, the Q button there or hit escape to leave the quick edit mode. And so I'll hit clear to clear those muted pads. Now for the pad group area, this uh, Let's see how how much decay we can add to there. So you see there's a long decay on there. So with the first one here, mute, if I select the snare drum, we've got that long decay. Let's set that to group A. I'll select the hi-hat, pad 3 to group A as well. So then when you have pads gr grouped, and I'll add this one to A as well, then they will silence the other pads in that group when you click on it or play it with your MIDI keyboard. So if I play this long, the one with the long dec decay, if you click one of these other two while that decay is still playing back, it will be silenced. So Okay, that would be better if I had a MIDI controller or my on-screen piano keys. I should have brought, up, should have brought those up, but I think you get the idea. And, of course, this has a quick edit mode for adjusting those parameters for every pad. So I can just turn those off just like that. And I'll hit the Q. Drum assignment. Now, this goes back to what we initially talked about with paying attention to the numbers in the upper left-hand corner because this is not always going to go sequentially, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. You see, because as we talked about, these are three. They are all triggering the same drum sound. It's just that they have a different hit type. Um, so if you click on this, you see the three here. This is three. And this is three. So they're all triggering drum sound three. It just has a different hit type for each one. So you can change this. We can select this one and make it play three as well. And if you note that the number up top changed, we can change that to play three. So this you know, I really like this feature. It just gives you lots of flexibility in working with your sounds. And again, you have the quick edit. So, um, oh, so you, you just, let's see. Okay. And I'll hit escape out of there. That should actually be eight or not. The clap must have been on a different.
Okay. I must have changed number six when I was in the quick editor. Uh, let's see. So the hit type, we've touched on this. Uh, these are both all playing three with different hit types. So hit four is open. If we change that to three, you've got that. And so you can see here in the nano sampler, there are four different samples within here. And that's what you're choosing in this particular instance when you're choosing the hip t hit type. It's not going to be the same for every single drum pad. So if, if I go to the snare here, you see our hit type, then this is based on the position of the snare drum, this physically modeled snare drum. So we're playing center now. I can choose position two. three, and edge. And again, you have the quick edit mode for changing the hit type of any of the 16 pads. OK, and I just realized that I skipped over some of these areas here. The uh, link, let's close the drum and effects section. So with link, you can essentially, this is one way that you can use to layer your drum sound. So if you are working with, say, a snare and you'd like to have three different snare types, you can load up your sounds, you know, just right clicking and browse drum patches and load something in there. Then you can choose, while this pad is selected, say you want D, just choose D, and you want this to play as well, choose D and you want this other snare to play. Choose D. So now that we've chosen D as the link for all of those, they will all be triggered if you trigger any one of these. Okay, and then you have a couple other ones that you can use to link other pads as well. Again, the quick editor there, I'll disable all of those. And Alt, so if we select the snare, let's do G, G, and G. So what Alt is going to do is now when I select any of these or, or play any of these pads, it's going to, you can just hit the same pad over and over, and it's going to alternate between the three that you have grouped together. And you're able to group three different groups. So... Okay, and again, you've got the quick edit mode, and I'll take these off of the group. So I think we'll finish up here for part two. Uh, in the next uh, video, we're going to move on to the drum and effects section here and cover some of the uh, modules that are contained within this section.